a new feedback loop that is melting ice shelves in West Antarctica has been discovered. Hello friends, welcome, Jim here. So what's going on? Well, let's find out. I will get back to this uh, figure later on in the video. New research has uncovered a feedback loop that may be accelerating the melting of the floating portions of the West Antarctic ice sheet, which will then result in an increase in global sea levels. The study, titled Antarctic Slope Undercurrent, an onshore heat transport driven by ice shelf melting, is published in Science Advances, sheds new light on the mechanisms driving the melting of ice shelves beneath the surface of the ocean, which have been unclear until now. I will be doing a deep dive analysis of this paper, which will be available for my paying supporters, being on either my YouTube community, Patreon, buy me a coffee. The West Antarctic ice sheet has been losing mass in recent decades, contributing to global sea level rise. If it were to melt entirely, global sea levels would rise by about 5 meters. It is known that the circumpolar deep water, abbreviated CW, CDW, a water mass that is up to 4 C above local freezing temperatures, is flowing beneath the ice shelves in West Antarctica, melting them from below. Since so much of the West Antarctic ice sheet lies below sea level, it is particularly vulnerable to this warm water intrusion and may further retreat in the future. Previous observations and models have revealed that eastward undercurrents are transporting this warm water to cavities under the ice shelves. Despite this being important, the mechanisms that, that drive this whole system has been difficult to ascertain. Professor Alberto Navera Garabato from the University of Southampton, who's a co-author, said our findings suggest a positive feedback loop. All right, here we go. Positive feedback loop. As the ice shelf melts more rapidly, more fresh water is produced, leading to a stronger undercurrent with more heat being transported toward the ice shelves, resulting in more melting, etc., etc. This cycle could speed up the melting of ice shelves, potentially making the West Antarctic ice sheet less stable in the future. And we are seeing signs of that. Researchers from the University of California, Los Angeles, MIT, and University of Southampton use high-resolution simulations to investigate the dynamics of the undercurrent. Dr. Alessandro Silvano from the University of Southampton, a co-author, said these simulations reveal that this deep current conveying warm waters toward the ice shelf is driven by the very same ice shelf melting that such warm waters cause. Their model suggests that when the warm CDW, circumpolar deep water, interacts with the ice shelf, it melts the ice and mixes with the lighter melted fresh water. This water then rises through the layers of water above it as it does. It spreads out, stretches the layer of CDW vertically. This stretching creates a swirling motion in the water. Called a vorti it's called vorticity. In this case, potential vorticity. Vorticity is a term uh, that describes a tendency for fluids to rotate. If there's a trough, basically 
and on the water valley near the coast the swirling motion is then carried away from the ice shelf cavity toward the edge of the shelf by the movement of pressure within the water this movement helps drive a current along the slope of the sea floor directing more warm water toward the shelf the ice shelf the undercurrent, underwater current forms a bit farther away from the ice shelf, so as more ice melts, the current gets stronger, carrying even more warm water toward the ice shelf. Dr. Silvana added, scientific models that don't include the cavities under the ice shelves are probably overlooking this positive feedback loop. Our results suggest it's an important factor that could affect how quickly ice shelves melt and how stable the West Antarctic ice sheet is over time. Okay, let's take a look at this figure. Let's orientate ourselves. Okay, towards the top of the page is uh, looking westward. Going from left to right is going from south to north. Okay. So the bottom of the page would be uh, coming at you uh, east, eastward. So you can see the ice sheet and the ice shelf that indicated. We have a wind, so you have a wind forcing uh, taking place that then pushes the surface current. Right? So you see the surface current indicated here. And what happens here, here's the shelf break. So you got the shelf, you got the shelf break. Here's the, uh, the deep water surface water deep water and you get surface current pushing this way through conservation of volume you get an undercurrent that moves in now you have melting so you're going to have a smaller salinity value so even though the water the deep water is warmer it's more saline and we know that Salinity tends to be the overriding factor when it comes to determining ocean water density in the polar regions. So it's more dense. So it comes in underneath. So this warm water comes in, it hits the melting, it then upwells because where else is it going to go? And now we have this warm water, it starts, it's melting the ice, you're adding more fresh water the wind pushes it away allowing for more of this to repeat so what we have here is what uh, you see these little things here called pressure torque transports cyclonic vorticity offshore okay and we have the source of cyclonic vorticity here we see vor vertical stretching faster rotation here we have vertical compression, slower rotation. It's not written in there, but that's what happens. So this is supposed to represent a parcel of water and it's rotating, okay? You can see it's even a, uh, a slower rotation here and it's really compressed there. As I said, vorticity is a, defined as a tendency for a fluid to rotate. Now this uh, Greek letter here tells us that this is a symbol used for uh, potential vorticity. Potential vorticity is taken relative uh, to you know where you are at relative to the Earth's rotation. Generally speaking, if it's the value is less than zero in the southern hemisphere, that indicates a cyclonic uh, rotation, which is clockwise, counterclockwise in the northern hemisphere, but it is clockwise in the southern hemisphere. Now, what is topographic steering? Is just the tendency for the water parcel to follow a certain bathymetric layer, if you will. So what would cause a parcel of water which is rotating, what would cause it to compress or stretch and so forth? Two main factors there, uh, bathymetry, how deep is the layer, 
Also, maybe the process of water gets trapped between two uh, layers of different densities, as an example. So, when if if the that layer is uh, thinner or not as thick, then you're going to get a compression. You squeeze the water outwards; it slows down in its rotation. Conversely, if it deepens, stretches it out, then that parcel of water will uh, reduce its uh, radius and the rate of rotation increases. A good way to think about this is uh, observe a figure skater when he or she goes into a spin as part of their routine. When they first start their spin, their arms are out to the you know, are, are out away from their body and they're doing what? They're spinning but slowly. Then as they bring their arms closer to their torso and then move their arms up over their head, right? They're, they're stretching their cells and what happens to their rate of spin? They, they spin faster. That's basically what this is going on here. But this is a mechanism to bring warmer water to melt the ice from underneath. The wind helps push the ice away, allowing for more to come back in. The vorticity and topographic steering are just specifics to the mechanism, but the overall underlying process is you've got warm water coming in, it melts, it up wells, that melt water moves away as it's mixed, moves away due to wind and surface current, allowing for more of that deep water to flow in, continue melting more water. There you have it. So this has a potential um, as to with respect to increasing uh, sea level uh, as well as sea level rise. This could lead to more Antarctic ice shelf uh, being melted and lost. Obviously, this has an uh, impact for the climate, impact for uh, coastal communities, and so forth. As I said, um, I will be doing a deep dive analysis of the paper as in Science Advances, and I'll be an exclusive for my supporting uh, members. Thank you for your time. If you wish to learn more of this topic that was discussed today, please support my work. You can do so by joining my YouTube community, become a patron at Patreon, or buy me a coffee. You'll see the details on the screen as well as in the description box. There I will do a deep dive video providing my analyses of the various figures as well as explanations of the concepts and their importance to the research that is featured. Thank you.